Hey guys, it's Miss Gephardt, and we're going to take a look at the ocean movement notes. When you get finished with these notes, you should be able to um, tell me the causes of an ocean current and the causes of a tide. You should also be able to understand and, under and be able to explain how the currents are actually distributing heat around the globe. Alright, so first thing we want to talk about is what an ocean current is, and an ocean current is simply a mass of moving, moving water. Well, that doesn't say very much, but you have to imagine, um, if you guys watched the um, Finding Nemo, and they talk about the EAC, the East Australian Current, the one the turtles are riding through, that's what we're talking about. So it's almost like imagining um, a river, so to speak, of water moving through a larger body of water. Okay, so when we look at this map, we have red indicating the warmer currents and blue indicating the colder currents. Um, and, and you want to imagine and think about um, warmer currents are going to tend to be towards the surface more as colder would be down at the bottom. Okay, so obviously colder currents are going to, you know, a lot more is going to originate from the poles and the warmer currents are going to originate from the equator. Um, surface currents and deep currents, so now we're taking the word current and dividing it up. The surface currents obviously are going to be along the surface, okay, and the deep currents are going to be as a result of density. So what that simply means is we know that cold, we've talked about this, but when we think of cold water or cold air, it doesn't really matter. Cold water, cold air, it's going to sink. Warm air or warm water is going to rise. That's why if you were to be in your house the hottest day of summer, the upstairs of your house towards the ceiling would be hotter than the downstairs towards the floor, just because warm air rises, warm water rises. Um, surface currents are controlled by the temperatures and wind along the surface. Not the temperatures, I'm sorry, just the wind along the surface. So it's that strong wind blowing through is going to cause movement up at the top. The deep current is just going to be caused by differences in temperature of the water. Okay, um, And we can think back to this diagram, so the warmer waters up here more probably towards the surface as these waters move themselves towards like a polar region they're going to get colder and that water is going to sink so it's kind of going to do this sort of you know this kind of movement as we're like a conveyor belt as we're moving through the globe okay and this is kind of giving you that idea so we have more of that surface action more of the deep action right in here okay deep uh, the cold originating from the poles warm originating from the equator all right, so with that thought process in mind, we have um, terms called upwelling and downwelling. So if you're having currents and we're moving things and, and water's moving all around, upwelling is movement of the water up to the surface. And what this water um, is going, this movement is going to bring is nutrients. So we get nutrient movement up to the surface and, or up towards the more shallow parts of the water. And this is why you've got like coral reefs and th stuff. If you ever looked at a coral reef, it's beautiful. It's full of lots of color and lots of life. That's because it's got a lot of nutrients to support that. Downwelling is going to be exactly as it sounds. It's moving the water down. And what downwelling is going to do is it's actually going to bring, it's going to carry oxygen downward. So we have to think um, down towards the um, organisms and creatures that live lower so nutrients bring it up to the the life that's up there down is going to push the oxygen down towards organisms that might need it or use it so this is going to help kind of both you know all sections of the ocean essentially and this is kind of giving you an idea so the downwelling going down and then upwelling pulling back up going this way Okay, and it's the same if you think of it, it kind of reminds you or should remind you like the plate boundaries, the convergent and divergent plate boundaries, how it's just being cycled when we think about the, conver the convection current in the earth, it's cycling and pulling things around, it's the same with this. So upwelling brings the water up, downwelling brings it down. All right, waves. So a wave is just an up and down motion along the surface of a body of water. The wave can be like this. The wave can be like this. It just depends. Okay. When we think of waves, um, we have to remember that a wave is going to actually be caused by winds. So you think if you've ever been to the beach and it's very, very, very calm, you really don't have a lot of wave action. If you were to go to the beach prior to a hurricane coming, the, the waves would be extremely choppy and big and you'd have, you know, it'd be great weather to bodyboard if you boogie board or whatever, but that's because of the wind. Um, when or the waves don't actually move water, it moves energy. So if you've ever been smacked by a wave, feel, think about how much that like that like you got slapped. It literally feels like whack. That's the energy hitting you um, when the wave you know hit crests and, and then falls. Um, when we think of the wave, the actual shape of the wave, 
the crest is the upper, the uh, top portion, the highest portion uh, of the, the wave. The trough, so trough is the lowest portion of the wave, the bottom part. If we were to measure wavelength, we mes measure from one crest to another. And if I'm measuring wave height, I measure from the crest to the trough. Okay. Um, some causes of waves. So obviously wind and, and a storm coming in is going to cause it. But we can also, there's other events that can happen. And these send off um, little waves that grow into bigger waves and bigger waves. And you probably know these guys as the tsunamis. Okay, those can send off bigger waves. So this is um, uh, right up here in this top corner. That is a, um, a landslide. So it's literally the land uh, due to lots of weather, rain or, what, or something has moved downward. So obviously this could lead and cause wave action um, right here, an earthquake. An earthquake is a little, you know, a tremor here, but we have to think it's like a ripple. It's going to send ripples all the way out. So if I drop a pebble in a pond, it sends ripples in all directions. It's the same thing as like an earthquake. So if I have an earthquake, you know, acting somewhat like a pebble dropping, it's going to save some send ripples out, which is energy. And that energy can get bigger and bigger and bigger. This actually, which is pretty cool, is an underground volcanic eruption. So that means there's a volcano under, uh, underground, underwater, and it literally erupts. Well, that's going to send ripples off in all directions as well. So these can be other causes of waves. All right, undertow. So if you've ever been to the beach, you definitely probably, not probably, I definitely have experienced the undertow. So like, let's say you're here, and you're chilling out, you know, and you just sat there. As the waves hit you, it pulls back. So that pull back, that force that you feel like you're being pulled back, that's the undertow. Sometimes it's stronger than others. A lot of times if it's stronger, it could be because of a, a weather system coming in, but it could pull you out to sea and that could be very dangerous to you. Okay, so be careful if you're in an undertow. Um, a longshore current, this is a current that's moving and as you can see, this is parallel to the beach. Um, and this is where the, the waves are coming in at an angle. So they're coming in at an angle. Instead of coming in head on, they're coming in at an angle. You've had this happen before if you've ever been to the beach. And let's say mom parks herself right here. And you're like, oh, I'm going to go out and play in the water right here. And you're playing and you're playing and you're playing. And all of a sudden, you look up and you're all the way down here. And you look and mom's not there anymore. You've actually shifted down the beach that's because of the longshore current the longshore current has pulled you and if you've ever tried to you know you're, you realize you're down here and you walk your way back you feel like it's really hard to walk that's because you've encountered that current and as these currents are building this is actually shifting sand which can build up sandbars along um, the shoreline or, or close to the shoreline I should say so a rip current now this is, we can see this is a sandbar right here. And what happens with the rip current is due to that, the waves crashing and pulling back, what it does is it ends up breaking the sandbar and it actually sucks the water through this hole. So I want you to imagine, this sounds really gross, but imagine, not really gross, but weird, you flushing the toilet. When you flush the toilet, that suck, that immediate pull, this is what would happen if you broke the sandbar. It would pull you out to sea very quickly. Okay, um, so you have to be very careful. These can actually be very dangerous. A lot of times you have warnings at the beaches that tell you there's a lot of rip current action, so be careful. If you are ever, a side note, if you were ever caught in a rip current, you're told to swim out of the current um, perpendicular to it or, or away from it this way. You're supposed to rip the current, so you're supposed to go away from it if the current is going this way. All right, a sandbar. So sandbars, and these are, this is a sandbar right here. This is just due to a piling up of sand, a long ridge that can form from, usually it's going to be pretty parallel to the shoreline, and all it is is the waves bringing in, bringing in all that sediment, and it just kind of piles it up. Um, sometimes they're visible um, any time of day, sometimes it's only visible um, during low tide, it just depends. Um, tides. So tides, um, if, you, if you've ever been to the beach, well, you know tides, um, there's a high tide and there's a low tide. And all that means is at high tide, the water is at its highest level. And then over the course of hours, that tide level will drop to its lowest point, which is its low tide. Okay, and that's all just rises and lowers. It spends all day, right? I think it's 
the high tide goes through like what twice a day i think low tides twice a day so it's like it just kind of cycles through it takes all this time to be a highest point and then it takes all this time to be the lowest point and it takes all this time to be the highest point so it's really just rising and falling that's all it's doing when we think about um the tide the tides are going to be caused by the gravitational pull of the moon and the sun so the moon and the sun pulling on objects on earth is going to cause the tides that cause the water to be the highest and then the water to be the lowest now there are two different types of specific tides and you may have heard them they're called spring tides and neap tides and they're higher than normal high tides or lower than normal lower, lower than normal low tides and the only reason these are happening is because of the alignment of the earth and the moon so it's either the new moon is here or the full moon is here and in an alignment with the earth and the sun or in a neap tide we have the earth and the sun lined up and the moon is either here or here and that's going to cause it if you have any questions please make sure you see your teacher and if you um, can't answer the essential questions go back through and watch the videos again